In this video, I'm gonna be sharing some landscape photography tips that are gonna help you improve your photography in the next year. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the channel where I post weekly videos on how you can improve your landscape photography with infield and post-processing tutorials as well as gear reviews. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Now in this video specifically, I'm gonna be sharing some tips on how you can improve your photography coming up in the new year. We all set these New Year's resolutions and these goals on how we can improve as people, but how about improve as landscape photographers too? I think goals are a really good way to set those improvements in place. You know, it said you achieve goals 40% more if you write them down at the beginning of a period. So I want you to write your goals down after or during this video so that we can all improve as landscape photographers. But I'm gonna be giving you some ideas and tips on exactly how to do that. Now I remember just a few years ago when I was starting out in landscape photography, I like did not have a lot of money to buy new gear or buy new cameras or buy new lenses anything like that. I didn't have money to travel to these like crazy locations that people go to, you know, Namibia, Patagonia, Iceland. I didn't have the cash to do that or go on workshops to the same locations. So what I did was step back a little bit. And I said, you know what, I can either sulk right now and pout that I don't have the money or the access to these things, or B, I can use exactly what I have and work through composition techniques, photography ideas, creative concepts, and improve myself as a landscape photographer. And then when I get to that point of being able to travel to those locations and shoot the way I want to and buy the gear I need, I'm gonna be ready to do that because I have the compositional background to do that. So let's jump right into this so that we can all start improving our landscape photographers immediately come the new year. Number one, visit every outdoor location or park that's within a three hour drive radius around your house. Now, why do I say this? Well, going to all of these places is going to help you adjust to landscapes. It's gonna help you adjust to new locations, adjust to new compositions, adjust to weather situations that are be going on, and varying your locations is going to be helping you do that faster. Getting into location, seeing a composition, visualizing a shot, knowing which lenses to use, all of that practice through the locations that are close to you within a three hour drive radius is really gonna help you step up your game when you get to those big locations that you're trying to get to. When you get to those, you're gonna have the background that you have this year of working on that, stepping into a location and being like, boom, here's the shot, I see it, here's how you set it up. Because you put in the practice that you're going to put in this year, working these new locations and close locations around you. Are they going to be huge epic shots? I don't know, maybe. You might get a few like keepers that you have with you. But when you put in the foundational work to step out to these locations. If you don't have that foundation that you have working through it and knowing how to progress through a composition and visualize that shot, you're gonna come away from those epic locations with shots that you may not be proud of. So the point of this is to practice seeing those compositions so that when you step into an epic scene or an epic situation, you can nail the shot and be proud of it, not get back home like I have several times, get back home and be like, well, I wish I had done this in this shot. I wish I had captured it this way. Instead, you're putting in the foundation beforehand in these close locations. Number two, piggybacking on that, take a photo specific tour this year. This is like a minimum three day tour, a three day trip, if you will. This is not a family vacation, guys. This is a photo specific trip that you're going into to a specific location. It may be one of these three hour radius drive locations that we just talked about. But going into that, knowing that you have a minimum of three days to capture landscapes in this location, I'm talking 
sleeping outside, I'm talking shooting in all weather conditions, shooting all light conditions, really studying the landscape, trying to get to various locations within that landscape and really hone in on what do I need to do when I'm in a situation when I put in the practice now, how do I nail it down later? If you don't have the money to go to this epic location or like a big three day photography trip, really work on getting to one of those places in your three hour drive radius for multiple days, figuring out where you need to go, how you need to shoot this landscape, what the weather is doing, how do I track weather and see what the weather is going to provide for me in photographs. So I think that's really important when we get to a location. I can remember I stepped into a situation in Grand Teton National Park where I had storm clouds moving across the mountains and I had put in the work beforehand in state parks and state forests around my house where I lived in Tennessee and going into the mountains, I could see that progressing and I could get into a situation where I could shoot the storm clouds in multiple different situations, panos, uh, landscapes, time lapses, all these things came together for me to shoot this and capitalize on this situation best as possible. And I want you guys to have that same experience too because it was absolutely incredible. Number three, force yourself to get outside and do this by starting a 365 project. Now a 365 project is a project in which you take one photograph per day every single day for an entire year. So I'm talking January 1st to December 31st. If you're watching this like in the middle of the year, let's go from July 1st to June 30th. Let's go like an entire year span of taking a photo every day for 365 days. It will force you to get outside. It'll force you to be more creative about your locations because chances are you're going to be standing in the exact same place a lot of different mornings and evenings. How do you create a creative composition, one that you haven't shot before of that location? How do you become aware of different situations going on around you and capitalize on those for grabbing that image? And you're, you'll probably come away with one really solid image per month. That's 12 new images in your portfolio that you wouldn't have had before. So really try to capitalize if you decide to do a 365 project really do it well and commit to it and you'll be very astonished by the end of it how much you've improved by that 365th day. Another project similar to that is choosing one specific genre of photography and shooting that for an entire year and really dialing in on perfecting that craft. This can be done for like black and white photography. I'm not gonna go into it right now, but I have a full video on how to shoot black and white photography. I'll put it right here and in the video description below as well for you to check out later. Also, you can do stuff like waterfall photography. Waterfall photography is one of my favorite things. I did this a couple years ago, really dialing in on how to shoot waterfalls best in East Tennessee. Again, here's videos like this that you can check out later. One up here, one in the video description. And then another one is adventure photography. You know, I did this a couple years ago on really only shooting adventure photography. I didn't do it for a whole year. I did it for about six months. And I saw a drastic improvement in not just adventure photography, but my entire experience in shooting. So like doing something like this helps you not only with this one genre of photography, but also like your compositional skills and all around photography, really helping you go deeper in different subjects of your landscape photography. Another big power tip is using each week throughout the year to learn one post-processing technique. There are 52 weeks in a year. I'm not great at math, but one times 52 is 52 post-processing tips you could master by year's end. If you really wanna up your game and get better photo results, post-processing is a huge, huge part of that. So spend time getting one technique dialed down every week of the year and you'll have 52 techniques mastered by the end of the year and your photos will be looking so much better. You can start with this one right here that I did on the Orton Effect just last week. You can watch those videos 
this card and in the video description below. I can't really go into it right now. Watch that on your own time later, but really dial in on post-processing too. And lastly, guys, commit to learning an artistic form of landscape photography. You know, when, when landscape photography first started, it was started as a way to document landscapes, document wildlife, document climates of places, and then it turned into an art form, really petitioned by those early landscape photographers to get it into an art form. So let's really go forward with that. Try to learn at least like two to three new artistic forms of landscape photography. These can be things like high key photography. This can be things like simplistic photography with a lot of negative spaces around it. Just really dial in on learning an artistic form of photography this year. Hey guys, I know if you master a couple of these, pick like two to three of these to do this year, or if you wanna do all of them and really crush your photography this year, it's gonna be amazing for you to see the results by year's end. If you start in January, end in December, if you start in July, end in June, you're gonna see huge transformation in your landscape photography. Putting in the work, putting in the grind, putting in the effort, and then seeing the results after a year is so fun to look back on. Hey guys, be sure to subscribe for more videos on landscape photography that are gonna help you improve your photography. If you wanna see more landscape photography tips, click or tap your screen right here. If you wanna see another video from this channel, click or tap your screen right here. Thanks so much guys, see you next time.